Mounting drives on Linux can be a bit confusing if you are a new user. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at how to mount drives for Linux gaming so then you can have an easier experience when it comes to uh, things like Steam accessing your drive. So you can either create a Steam library folder and start installing games or some other little things that may uh, cause some problems. So in this video, we are going to show two different applications you can use on Linux today that are GUI applications that are from two different desktop environments, which is the KD Partition Manager for the KD Plasma desktop and the GNOME Disks application for the GNOME desktop environment. So the first application we are going to look at is the KDE Partition Manager. If you want to use the GNOME Disk application, you want to see me um, configure it for the different drives I have, I will leave uh, it pinned on the video feed so you can easily go and click on it to see what I'm doing. Now, what we are going to do first is set up a rather basic mount point that I personally use for my Linux desktop when it comes to just the general moving files around and playing games on it. There's another way of mounting drives on Linux, which is more of a universal way of doing it so that you can get some extra functionality out of it. Like if you want to do sharing the drive on like, let's say a network or something, uh, this mounting that we're doing here is not the right way of doing that if you want that feature. So what we're going Going to do here is of course we're going to edit our mount point in this application which is the KDE partition manager so we're going to right click on it and we're going to go edit mount which of course if you um, haven't created a partition yet for that drive you should format it and create an ext4 uh, partition which is pretty easy to do in this application and after you make that partition, either it be ext4 or btrfs, I'd probably just recommend ext4 as it's just a more, I guess you could say, industry standard, even though btrfs is used in lots of different Linux um, environments. I would say ext4 is the more uh, standard option for formatting a, a, a partition on a drive. Uh, so what we're going to do is edit the mount point here. And it's going to bring up this window here with the path, uh, the identifier, which we want to leave the identifier by default on device node. Now, I know GNOME Disks uh, likes to use the UUID. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of like just, just an identifier for the drive. So we're just going to leave it as device node. And what we're going to do here is go select button here for the path that we want to select for wherever the, the drive we want to mount on Linux. So what we are going to do is mount it in our home uh, directory. So we're going to create a folder. This is the way I do it. You don't have to do it this exact way. Uh, but when it comes to creating the folders, we're going to right click on the home uh, of the user and we are going to create a new folder and we're going to create a drives folder. That's what I like to call it. Just capital D so that hopefully um, and there's nothing that I like git clone or anything that will like actually be the same name as that. So I do a capital D on drives and then we create another folder that's going to be the actual drive of where that drive is going to be mounted so for this one it is the games folder so then we just select the games folder and click ok and it will fill in the path uh, for that directory of where you want the drive to mount now the normal way is uh, drives are going to automatically mount in the mnt place because it's a temporary spot uh, designed for drives that have been installed on a computer or you plugged in a usb device that has storage on it uh, it's all going to be mounted in that mnt so you can mount your drive in mnt but it is in root so it's a bit uh, you could say less secure but you're going to add permissions to it that are going to make it more secure anyways but it's able to let you do things like if you want to let the drive be shared by other um, computers for example you would want to mount it in mnt which would probably do the same thing which is create a new folder in mnt call it a drives folder and then create another folder for the drive you want to mount into that folder now, what we have here is the option section, and this is where we can add different options for the drive when it comes to how it uh, behaves on Linux and what type of like permissions it's allowed to do or what like other users are allowed to access the drive from. And the first one we can enable is don't prevent the system from booting if not mountable. I think that's a pretty common one that you should enable because, well, yeah, if you're trying to boot the system uh, and the driver's having a problem, then the system won't boot. But with this enabled, 
it can still boot and the drive just won't mount properly. And I usually do have the um, users can mount and unmount as well. Um, but I guess in this case, it might be less secure. That's uh, completely up to you if you want to have this enabled. Uh, I usually do have it enabled. And then there's some options that are not included in this one, I don't think, uh, which are these here. Now, when it comes to uh, what do these options exactly do, well, I do have it uh, noted down here if we bring it up. And the first one is the no SUID, which prevents the execution of set UID and set GID binaries on the mounted file system. Set UID slash set GID bits allow programs to run with the privileges of their owner or group. This option enhances security by blocking such behavior. Then the next one is no dev. This disallows device files, uh, e.g. dev slash SDA, on the mounted file system from being interpreted as devices. This prevents users from accessing or creating device files, reducing the risk of unauthorized access to the hardware. And then no fail allows the systems to continue booting if the specified um, file system fails to mount. This is useful for non-critical drives or removal meter that might not always be present. And then the other one is the XGVFS uh, show. This is for GNOME uh, file managers so that the file system can actually be uh, visible by a graphical file manager like Nautilus, which is the GNOME file manager. And then the last one is the ESIC option, uh, which the ESIC option is an ex executable, is what ESIC stands for. And there's a little problem if you are trying to, at least in my experience, when you're trying to mount drives and you're trying to add Steam games to it, you're trying to create a Steam library, or if you have a Steam library on it, Steam is not able to access the drive properly because it's not executable. Uh, in my testing, this only happens on Arch uh, machines and maybe Fedora uh, on some Something like uh, Pico OS that I have installed right now as kind of like a dual boot, uh, Pico OS doesn't have that problem. So if you don't have this problem when you try to add a Steam library, which I'll show up a screenshot of the error that appears, uh, if that doesn't happen for you, then you do not need the exec option. Like on Pico OS, I don't have the problem, but on Arch Linux or any type of Arch Linux derivative like Cache OS, uh, this issue does appear. So I have to use the exec option so then Steam can actually use the Steam library directory. And as you can see, the options here are like, I click enter to um, space them down. That's how it was ordered when I did paste it in uh, because I, I basically copied some of the options from here because I thought GNOME did a good job with the options. And I do think that um, some extra options should be added to the KDE Partition Manager in the options sections, like the ones we just explained, uh, which is quite odd that they're not there, or maybe they are, I'm just like not reading it correctly. But that is literally it when it comes to uh, mounting a drive on the KDE Partition Manager with uh, these options that we are going to be using. And this window will appear, which it says it wants to make changes to the e, uh, etc slash fstab, or slash etc slash fstab, which is an important part when it comes to the automatic mounting process, uh, which you can check this manually just to make sure that everything is enabled properly. Uh, if you want to check it, we can just open up a terminal here because uh, this is more of a manual way of doing it. We just do uh, sudo space nano and then we do slash etc slash fstab we type in our password and then if we have a look here we can see uh the two ssds that i have here that are mounted in that directory with those options and it says what the um partition uh, is which is ext4 and if you want to uh, make changes or whatever you can then do Control x and that should bring up a y to confirm those changes and then you can click enter to then leave nano so then um, everything gets saved in uh, that fstab and the last application we are going to look at is gnome disk for the gnome users so if we hit a disk uh, here we hit the settings icon we hit edit mount options we should be greeted with uh, being able to customize it manually if we hit the user session default toggle off. Then there is two mount options that are enabled uh, already, which is the system startup and the show and user interface. And then we have the options here, which we'll go over very soon, like we did in the KDE partition one. And then we have the mount point. 
So what we're going to do is for this one, we want to do a user mount. Basically, we're going to mount it in the home folder slash user slash drives slash games. So if we want to, we can already create these folders or we can do it right here. And then when we reboot the PC, uh, those folders will be created. So as you can see here, uh, my drives and games are capital at the start, uh, not lowercase. So that if, if there's any type of like game folder or drives folder that appears, uh, it can it, it may not be, uh, most likely won't be a capital letter. It will be probably just be a lowercase so that it doesn't get actually like uh, interrupted by saying, hey, there's already a folder that's been created. So that, that's one thing to make sure really, I would say is when you're creating this, make sure that the um, folder that you're going to create and then the folder that you want the drive to be mounted in is not going to be uh, the same name of something that you would download online. And then we can leave uh, the uh, rest to the default as whatever GNOME disk wants it to be, which is just the identifier as slash dev slash sdb1 and then the file system type, which is ext4. And then when it comes to the options that are on this drive here, what do these really mean? Well, if you want to, you can go back on the video where I do talk about it. I go through each option of what they mean. Uh, it's probably like, I would say maybe 10 or 15 minutes into the video, I start discussing over these options and if you do you don't need all these options necessarily uh, some of these are just better when it comes to the privacy stuff uh, but that is it when it comes to the um, option stuff if you go in and watch the previous part of me talking about it now one last thing about the whole drive situation on linux when it comes to mounting them uh, the last thing i would say is about what if you are using flatpak applications uh, because if you don't know flatpak is sandboxed and so it doesn't have a way to look at certain drives that are outside of the home directory so if your drives are mounted like me they're mounted in the the home directory uh, there shouldn't be any problems when it comes to detecting the drives because well flatpak can see it uh, but if your drives are mounted in the root space like originally mine were, was mounted in the root area i had to add permissions to the flatpak applications so then the drive can actually see it so we can grab an application like FlatSeal. This is a common application when it comes to configuring different Flatpak applications. And this is where we can either decide uh, if you want one application to see the drive directory, or if you want all of the applications that are installed under Flatpak to see that directory. So for example, if you are using Lutris, Heroic, Bottles, Steam um, under the Flatpak version, then you would scroll and find that application. You would click on it and you would scroll down to you find the file system and you want to go to other files. You click a little plus folder button here and then you type in the directory that you want uh, that Flatpak application to see. So for example, if I had my drives mounted in the root area, I would just do slash, that's root, and then I would type in games. That's I think that's how it was originally, but if it was like the MNT one, it would just be slash, which is root, uh, MNT slash, and then uh, drives and then slash games or whatever. And then when you relaunch the application, it will be able to see the directory. So if you're trying to install, let's say a wine application, like a, a game under wine, uh, wine will be able to see uh, that directory now. And that is basically it when it comes to mounting a drive on Linux for, I would say, things like gaming or just the basic usage of a uh, drive that's mounted. Nothing really crazy going on. Uh, of course, if you don't want to mount your drive in a user space area like your slash home, you can mount it in like slash MNT and then slash something folder and then something of where you want the drive to be mounted if you want more extra functionality out of it but i think for most people when it comes to mounting a drive like an ssd they probably don't really want to do that much with it except maybe some games they probably want to hold some video files or just random backups of things uh just to make uh you know life a little bit easier so if you guys did enjoy this video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to all, and let me know uh, your thoughts about how you mount a drive on Linux, because I know there's plenty of ways you could mount a drive of, of where it should be mounted or, or whatever. I would really uh, like to know. And thank you to my supporters. I'll show a text across the screen. Thank you for your money every single damn month. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.
Peace.